Well, what's the question? I have one question. The main thing that Christians are claiming that Jesus is calling them. The Bible says that God will change. But then people preach that Christians are John, first John, and everything that is God. Uh, in, the, in the beginning, the word is in God, the word was God, the word came flesh. But in the Old Testament, it's God to the change in our life. So, is that, is that how you explain that? Um, that the incarnation yeah, yeah. is not a change in God. So it's, it's a change in reality. So, was he always a man? Or was he, was he always flesh? Or did he become flesh? He became flesh at a point in time. Does that make you change? Uh, no, it doesn't. It means that reality changed. If you would have changed, if you would have flesh before, then he became flesh. Okay, it's not a change, no, it's not. It's a change for reality, but not for God. Uh, it's, it's not. Um, okay, for example, when you look at a thing, look at me for example, look at the bottle, right? A change is occurring where you are now taking in additional information. The change of my direction. Right? No, 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 no. The, the change of the information you're taking in, right? But that has not changed who you are. Okay, okay, you use an analogy. If I use the same analogy, my ball is black. If I get a, a, a paper, I paint it white, and now white is changed from black to white. Okay. So if the, the, the word became flesh, and it wasn't flesh before, that means it changed. Uh, no, it doesn't mean it changed. Because what we hold here isn't that God transformed into a man. Transformed? That's, that's the whole... No, what we hold here is not that God transformed into a man. No. So God is always God. Right? And then God is characterized by what we say is his divine nature. Now all the three persons are equal to the divine nature. Right? Now, awesome. Now, when you have the incarnation and you have the description of the Word becoming flesh, we're not saying that the Word of God transformed into flesh. We're saying that he took on to himself a human nature. So when we look at, look at creation, we say that creation is an external procession of God. Because in creation, you have time, you have matter. Yeah, okay. Now, what changes? What was flesh before? I forgot the question. Before was so, God is God is never flesh. God is spirit. That's what the Bible says. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You need to understand how it works, right? So, just like with everything in the created order, when God made the universe, He didn't change. And so God doesn't have a physical essence. Right? God doesn't have a physical essence. Essence is non-physical. Essence is existence. So when Jesus, right? okay, let me rephrase. When Jesus existed, right? You can have whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. But you see... Do you see the comparison I'm making here? When creation, when, when the world of form and matter is created by God, God doesn't change. In the same way, in the same way, when the incarnation happens and a body of form and matter is created for the person of Jesus, God doesn't change. The only thing that changes is reality. Well, it, it's not because I, I think you're, you're holding this view that well, I think you're, you're confusing one of two things. Either you're thinking that the Word of God, who was like a ghost, became a man, or 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 are, are you thinking that the Word of God swam into a man? No, no, I don't know that. What, what, so describe to me what the incarnation is. I'm I don't know what incarnation is, it's your view. Right, but you seem to know what it is because you're positing that it will cause a change in God. So tell me why. I'm looking at what the Bible says and I'm comparing it to the Christian claim. Okay. So the Christian claim, and the, one of the evidence that they use for Jesus being God in 1 John, in the Word, like the Word of God in the Bible. So one of the evidence 
Yeah, the news is the word, the word is God, the word was God, the word became. By, by definition, in order to become something, change has happened. You can't become something and no change. Right, happens. well, actually, here's the interesting thing. In the Greek, right, it doesn't actually render that term became. It, rem it renders it as uh, tabernacles. So, so when you have in the Old Testament, there's an understanding that when the Israelites were in the deserts and when they went into their cities, they had a place for God, a, a, a house of Allah, a, a base Allah, if you will, right? And in that place, the presence of God was there in the tabernacle, right? So the same concept is being used for Jesus, that the word of God tabernacles in the person of Jesus, so dwells. So the, the actual translation of dwells, not change? Huh? So the, the actual... The, well, the, word, the, 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 the word is tabernacle, which is, means dwells. So, so instead of saying the word became flesh, the word dwelled in flesh. Dwelled in flesh. Dwelled in flesh. Yes, in the same way that, 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 that the God, or the presence of God, dwelled in the temple. So, so it's a mistranslation, basically. It's not a mistranslation, but different translations have different translation traditions. When you translate the Quran, it isn't always accurately translated in every single yeah, language, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So things are rendered in a way for, for the audience. Yeah. So, so when it says the game, actually should be dwelt. So it's a or, or, or tabernacles in the same way that the presence of God dwells in the temple. Same concepts. Yeah. So that, that, that's how we can tell, oh, that, that's, how, that's a way yeah. that if you read deeper into the Bible, yeah, yeah. we can say that what's happening in the incarnation yeah. isn't uncharacteristic. It's yeah. happened before yeah. in a different sense. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what the Ark of the Covenant is? No, no, no. no. So, is but, it like a but, Christian uh, doctrine? Like? Uh, well, it's actually a Jewish one, but we hold to it as well. It's not a doctrine, yeah. it's an item. A box made of gold yeah, yeah. With, uh, with two holes to ram rods through so you can carry it. Mm. And inside of it, there's three items. Yeah. There's the tablets of yeah. the Ten Commandments. Yeah. There's the staff of, of Aaron. Yeah. And then there's a pot of something called manna. I believe you have this in the Quran. The, 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 the heavenly food that God can give people. I think it's I think I think it's there somewhere. Um, you know you know when um when uh, when the Quran says that Mary was fed by Allah. Oh yeah, uh, the dates came. The dates came and water gushed. Yeah, but they, they they came from somewhere. Where, where, is that? I believe this is where she was in the temple. No. She was in yeah what we know as what part of the and Allah was feeding her in the temple, right? I don't know if she was feeding her, but water I think water gushed from her feet. I think water gushed from her feet. I I believe it says that Allah was feeding her in the temple. I believe that's what it says. I, I don't know. I don't know about feeding. But I know that water gushed from her feet, and then dates came. Date there was a date tree. Okay. Well. Exactly. I think the thing was to shake the Yeah, yeah. She, she, I think she was seeking um, shade on the tree and water gushed from her feet and she ate dates. I will get the reference uh, for you guys. I'm not sure. But I've never heard about um, good feeding. Okay, well, effectively, let, let me just bring it back for one second. The idea of this manna, basically heavenly food that God gave the Israelites in the desert. I think it even says that in, in the Quran. Now we have, are you talking about the Jesus story? Where huh? uh, God sent down, sent down a table of food? Uh, no, that, that, that's, that's not Almeida. That, that, that could be an example, I guess, of heavenly food. So, so how, 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 how do you use that to... Uh, I, I was describing something. Yeah, so the word manna does not appear in the Quran a few times. So it's, it's, in, it's in Surah 257, Surah 716 and Surah 2028. The idea is it's food from heaven basically. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Where? Yes. Yes. Uh, I I need to go find that again. I need, I need to. Um. Basically, I'm trying to describe to them the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. What that is. I'm trying to describe it to them. So I, I was describing what it contains. So anyway, just real, real quick again, the stones, the staff of, of Aaron, and then a pot of manna, right? And also, the presence of God is in this box. Of a literal presence? Yeah. And yep. this is in the Old Testament? In the Old Testament. In fact, there's an instance where two things happen. Yeah. It, it can only be handled by the Levites, the priests, because they're the only ones who are spiritually pure enough to carry it. So, 
This is giving me like Catholic, uh, Catholic vibes, like you know, just just find the source. Well, you you believe that prophets are pure too? Yeah, but so same jazz, right? Yeah, but this is like the priests are pure, like yes. Yeah, so so so, so, Catholic, so Catholic. you know, for example, when you guys pray, yeah, yeah. you purify yourself. Yeah, yeah. Same jazz, okay. right? Okay. So. So, um, what's happening is the, the ark is actually being brought into the kingdom of Israel, into David's palace. However, same word, he's, huh? same word, like, like he's in the Greek, the dwelling. Uh, the, the, that, that's used in a previous, so the, 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 um, the ark is from the time of Moses. David comes way after, right? But that dwelling concept is there even in the time of Moses. Now, in an instance, hundreds of years later, the ark is being brought into the kingdom of Jerusalem and it's being carried by priests. Now, one of them falters and the ark looks like it's going to fall down. So a regular man reaches out to stop him from falling down and then he's killed. Yeah, so the, the, the ark kills him because he wasn't ritually pure enough. Right? Right? And, and then, and then, later on, or, or sorry, in the time of, uh, this is before David, sorry, in a different time, the ark is stolen by the Philistines and it brings calamity on them until they return it. Right? And the same concept, the presence of God is in the ark. So when you have Jesus, so what would, you, what would you say about that verse? Huh? What would the Jews say about that verse? I have no idea. You have to go ask the Jews. I don't think they'll interpret that way. Well, they, ha they have to admit that the presence of God is in the ark. That, 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 yeah, yeah, so th there's this idea, th there's, there's an idea of, of the, the Shekinah or, or the, the dwelling. Yeah. And that's basically it. It's a Jewish concept. Well, you know, it reminds me of God in the Old Testament. And, and by the way, like, no offense, but it doesn't matter what the Jews say regarding this stuff because they have their own means of interpretation. It's yeah. like me if I said, oh, well, the Shia don't, don't, don't agree with you. Yeah. Okay, but, yeah. Okay, but yeah, it reminds me of another verse in the Bible. Where, I don't know where exactly, but in the Old Testament, where Jacob says, my temple can't contain you. Uh, Solomon. Oh, yeah, Solomon. Yeah. My, my temple can't contain, contain you. Yeah. Alone. No, this verse can't contain you. Exactly. Yeah, alone, my my temple. Exactly. So, like, how would that fit into this part of the covenant? Uh, because the dwelling is not the literal full presence of God. Some of it. Yes. Well, if you can put some, yes. It, 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 it's, it's a portion, if you will, yeah. yeah. It's a sort of, because the fullness yeah. can dwell in, uh, so the fullness of God cannot dwell in our reality. So you know that thing you say when you guys say God can't enter his creation? Yeah, yeah. We actually agree with you. The fullness of God cannot permeate the finite reality. However, there are ways that God can interact directly with us. And those ways are in the dwelling that we have in the temple, in something also that we call theophanies, the, uh, uh, the burning bush, the pillar of fire, the, the and in Jesus. So those are the three ways by revelation that we can see how God can interact with us personally. But God has never entered creation in his magnitude because the, the, the limited creation cannot contain the infinity of God. It's like a part of God. Well, not, not, not a part of God, but the presence of God. Yeah. So the, the, there's, there's different places that we can hold where God's presence is stronger for a moment in time. So when you see, for example, the burning bush, in that instance, God's presence is highly fo uh, uh, focused in that particular area at that time, which is why you can hear the voice of God and see the fire. But, but, but there's another thing that reminds me of, so you know, the second, the second commandment. You don't give yourself any graven image. Sure. Because God is not like anything that comes in the sea. Well, it, it doesn't say that. It no. says, don't make unto yourself any image of anything above, yeah. on the earth, beneath the earth, yeah. and don't bow down to them and worship them. So, yes, don't make unto yourself any image and worship it as God. Yes. Yeah, because uh, cause God doesn't resemble any of those things. Yes. So, but Jesus resembles a human being. Yes. Which is why yeah. the uh, Catholic and Orthodox churches yeah. make what they call icons of Jesus. Yeah. We know what he looked like yeah. and is really man. Yeah. So, you can make an image of him. But you can't make an image, for example, of the Father or the, the divine essence. But, but some Christians do that as well. Yes, but yeah, but, 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 but the, the depictions of God the Father aren't allowed. Uh, and, and they appear in, in like some like classic paintings or whatever, but historically that's not allowed. And then even today, actually, you won't go into a church and find like an icon of God the Father because no one knows what he looks like. 
Yeah. But some some depicting of the white old man in like churches. Like you see the the triune like depiction in the. What what you 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 should you shouldn't depict yeah. the father from my understanding. And and him being a white man is just a case of people depicting them in a way that mirrors them. Yeah, yeah. Which is like whatever. Like some will argue you can't do that. Some will say you can. As you're aware. There's churches in Brazil, in Africa, yeah, yeah. in Ethiopia that depict them a different way. But the same thing also happens in like uh, Japan and Korea, yeah. different way. Now, some will argue, oh, it's fine, whatever. Make him look like you. Some will say, no, you can't. He has to look as he did. And it's really man. He wouldn't be Arabic, no. He's, he's Israeli. From the house of David. That's not an Arabic house. It's an Israeli Israel house. The Arabs are different people. Okay, so you yeah. think he came from like the Isaac? Or yeah, yeah, so he would have come from, from, from my Isaac, yes. Uh, not from the uh, like an Arabic line. Yeah. Well, actually, the, uh, I, I actually found a hadith that says that Ishmael actually joined the Arabs. So there's a hadith that says, of course, Sahih. That says Ishmael joined the Arabs and learned their ways. So apparently, the Arabs were already a pre existing uh, uh, okay, people before Ishmael even got there. Well, that's what you guys say popularly. But your hadith is otherwise. You don't see it. I got it on me. I got it on my bookmark so I can get it on for you. I know the Bible prophet, but it's my prophet. The previous Arabs that were destroyed in the Bible were the Amalekites. Amalekites. So I don't think the Amalekites were Arabs. I think Arabs are a much later people. Yeah. But I heard that the Amaleks were the original Arabs. They were wiped out. Well, it, it'd be hard to call them Arabs if they didn't like speak Arabic or have an Arabic culture. Yeah, I think that, so. Many people groups have have occupied that land over time. The Arabs are a more recent one, but I don't think that their culture and language goes back like five thousand years. I don't think it goes that far back. So I'm not like, knowing. I'm just looking for the thing. But yeah, carry on, yeah. carry on. If you ask like Jews and Arabs and Christians, all agree that Arabs are like Ishmaelites. I think that that's a popular understanding, but it's not historical. But isn't it biblical? Because no. When you look at Keda, which is um, Ishmael's grandson, the location is can be found in the Arab Yes, but there are other people who could also descend from him other than the Arabs. There's many other people groups there. I read the Old Testament. There's the Hittites, Jebusites, uh, Amalekites, uh, uh, Tamorites. There's so many people who could be. Mid Midianites. Midianites. All, all in, in, in that area, Arabian Peninsula, Jerusalem, uh, Egypt, in, in Syria, uh, uh, that general Levant area. So it could be, you, you can say it's the, you can say it's the Arabs, but a million people groups can claim it's them too, so. If someone, if someone outside the Arab claim it as well, yep. then wouldn't it, wouldn't it make sense that they are? Um, are the not, not necessarily. Yeah. If they're simply claiming it yeah. because the Arabs claim it, yeah. then that isn't so strong enough reason why. No, not because the Arabs claim it, but if another, if another ethnic group like claim it as well. Like um, where are they getting the info from is what I want to know. Uh, are they getting it from the Arabs? Or from someone else. Uh, if you get from ancestry. All right. Here, here, here's the thing. Uh, it's in Bukhari. Yeah, it's in Bukhari, right? So, uh, I've, I've gone down significantly, but you can get it for yourself. It's Bukhari three three six four. Three three six four. I'm talking about this area right here. So. Okay, uh, so they settled there. They implied. Okay, let me start here. Uh, the prophet Ishmael's mother was sitting near water, then asked her, uh, Do you allow us to stay with you? She replied, Yes, but you will have no right to possess the water. They agreed to that. The prophet further said, Ishmael's mother was pleased with the whole situation as she used to love to enjoy the company of people. So they settled there, and uh, later on, they sent uh, their families. So, for the families who became permanent residents, the child, i.e., Ishmael, grew up and learnt Arabic from them, and his virtues caused them to love and admire him as he grew up. And when he reached the age of puberty, they made him marry a woman from among them. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so Ishmael, yeah. Ishmael would be a half 
um, a half Egyptian, no, yeah, half Egyptian, yeah. half. Um, who, sorry, who one second, I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, not Canaanites. Uh, so Abraham was a Chaldean. A Chaldean. Yeah, uh, ancient Mesopotamian people. Uh, this is before Babylon. Right? Yeah, way before Babylon. So he was a Chaldean and Hagar was an Egyptian. So Ishmael is half Chaldean and half Egyptian. And according to your own source here, Sahih Bukhari 3364, he joined the people who were the Arabic people and then he married into them. So he himself isn't an Arab. Yeah. He's a Chaldean and Egyptian. Yeah, yeah. No one, no one, no one claims that Ishmael's Arab. Well, you guys claim he's the father of the Arabs, but he's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But if he learned Arabic and married into an Arab, uh, Arab woman, yes. then his offspring would be Arab-speaking people. Right. But he can't be the... So Abraham, for example, yeah. is the father of, of, of the Jews, father of faith, yeah. right? And, because uh, he, he is yeah, the earliest yeah. descendants, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. However, Ishmael yeah. isn't the father of the Arabs. But he's still being yeah. married into them. Married into them. That wasn't yeah. making the father. Yeah. A father implies paternity. Yeah, like he is the cause of. Yeah, so he married into the Arabs. And his offspring became like it became the Arab people, isn't it? The Arab people came from his offspring, basically. No, they already existed. Oh, so also, yeah, but he married into them. So his, his, the Arabs are his offspring. The Arabs existed. Yeah. He joined them. So, so he's not their father. So, are you, so you're saying that... For, for example, for yeah, example, yeah. say you marry an Indian woman yeah, yeah. and you have children that are... I'm guessing you're East African? Yeah, yeah, Somali. Somali. Yeah, yeah. If you have children yeah. that are half Indian and half Somali, yeah. does that now make you the father of the Indians? No, it doesn't. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So that's what Ishmael did here. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I'll let you read it again. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. He married an Arab woman, not Arab. I'm saying so that the he, people, yeah. according to this text, must have been Arab. Like, Arab speaking, Arab speaking. So, ca yeah. ca can you be Arab speaking in the ancient world, yeah. but not Arabic? Yeah, no, no, obviously, an Arab speaking person is going to be Arab. Okay, so, Ishmael, the Arabs were a pre-existing people. Yeah. He married into them in the same way yeah. that the Indians, for example, already exist. Yeah. And you marrying into them yeah. will not cause you to be considered to be but their I, father. How does it negate the, the fact that Arabs come from Ishmael? Because according to your text, they don't. But no, where does it say that they don't come from Ishmael? Because that, they already exist before he's born. Yeah, just because they already existed that people are living in that area. That doesn't mean that the Arab people, are, are they are today, didn't descend from him. Because he is not Arabic and married an Arab woman. His descendants could still end up being our people. Ha, okay, so for, for what you're saying to be yeah. true, somehow yeah. it must have been the case yeah. that every Arab man yeah. in that time was killed well, and every, only uh, Ishmael prevailed. I'm, I'm, I'm not making that claim. I'm just saying that to negate the, like, to negate the fact that all the Arab people are not Ishmael because he married an Arab speaking woman. It's not enough to like um, falsify it. Okay. If you, if that makes okay. Sense. So, yeah. question: yeah. In this group, yeah. would they have been men and women, or no? Well, of course. Okay. okay. Yeah. These men and women had children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ishmael had children. Yeah. yeah. Why do the Arabs only descend from Ishmael and not the other couples? Well, I, I, I don't know about that. That's 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 my problem with your play. But this is not something that's well established within the Abrahamic black like, faith. I think it's assumed. It's not for that. You know, Jews. Jews don't. They don't really mess with So, so yeah, they would have made the claim for us. If, so, if, if it was true, if it was true, or if it was true, it would, the claim would only be coming from us. Like so, I so think, not. I think that the Jewish claim of the Ishmaelites, yeah. or even um, uh, John of Damascus. Uh, uh, one of the early Christians who interacted yeah. with Islam, yeah. he called it an Ishmaelite heresy. So, from what, what, what I what, what, what is uh, 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 Islam, John of no, uh, John of Damascus. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Uh, from, from the seventh century, he called uh, Islam yeah. an Ishmaelite heresy. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think simply that maybe colloquially, yeah. or by uh, by like uh, self determination, yeah. the Arabs came somehow to be known 
as Ishmaelites. I cannot tell you if that name was put on them or if they chose it. I don't know. So even pre-Islamic uh, races, they don't knew that they were Ishmael. So they preserved that, they preserved that lineage. Because so they didn't know about, they didn't have any knowledge about the I, I don't know about this claim that they claimed to be from Ishmael. No, they I, I don't know how you can prove that. If you, if you look at, if you take in, like, pre-Islamic like, like, they, they did identify as Ishmaelites. I'm, I'm a bit skeptical yeah. about a lot of pre-Islamic History. Oh, you, you know it. The story of Moses. Yeah. How he went to Midian. Yeah. The Midianites saw Ishmael as well. I don't know. 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 I Abraham yeah, yeah. has three sons. Yeah, yeah. Three. Three. Are you sure not two? Who are both? Midian. No way. There's no way. I only know Ishmael Isaac. Let me show you, my friends. Let me show you. Let me show you. There's a third one. Let me show you. So the million that came from him. From million. Ain't it crazy? Ain't it crazy? That's, that's why I love the Bible, man. The Bible is so, it's so dope in, in that way. The stories connect in this like insane fashion, man. I don't know I mean, let, me, let, me, let me show you, man. I would I actually encourage you to read the Bible. Yeah. Start from Genesis downwards. I would encourage you to do it. Yep. So, um, Abraham took another wife. This is Genesis 25 verse 1. Uh, whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, uh, uh, I hate these names, man. Uh, Jokshan, Midian, uh, also Midian, Midian, Isbak, and uh, Sh uh, Shawa. Five, uh, yeah, well, there's five others. So you have, right? so you have seven in total. Huh? So you have seven, seven in total, total right? Yeah. So the Midianites are from Midian, who isn't Ishmael. So the Midianites wouldn't be Ishmaelites. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know about Midianites. The, the Bible's dope, man. It's so dope. The take yeah. They said that they said that Ishmael that, that would be incorrect then, from a from a um, like a narrative point of view. Is, is that is that the cartoon or a different one? You you you've seen Prince of Egypt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Prince of Egypt is interesting because at the very end, you know how like the waves come down on Pharaoh, but at the end he's on a rock saying Moses, right? So the Bible doesn't say that happens. No, the Bible actually leaves it open. We don't know if Pharaoh was with the chariots or if he uh, stayed behind and had them give chase. Because historically, Ramses died in his old age. Yeah. When he was 90, the Quran claims that he was buried, in, but he didn't. We have his sarcophagus. Yeah, the Quran also said that we left his body at the fire. Right, but his body was mummified by people and not the water. Was it? Yes. I, I heard that the body remained fresh until this day. Mummification, yeah. an actual process yeah. where human beings take out your internal organs and embalm you. Yeah, but the Quran said we left him fine. Did the Bible not say he was lost? No. It's lost. No. So Leaves sure. it open. So yeah. if the Quran is saying yeah. that Allah left him, well, historically human beings embalmed him. So who's correct? Yeah, if Allah, if the Quran says that Allah left him, like left on the side, I don't agree with it. I don't indicate the fact that Allah caused his body to stay with us to the side. It's like, for example, there's many examples like where God, God doesn't really do himself, but it happens to other people. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. How about this? Yeah. How does how does Pharaoh die in the Quran? In the Quran, I think he drowned. Ramses died of old age. So, is so Ramses proven to be Ramses the second? Yes. Like proven, like well, well, prove it. Prove it in this sense. Yeah. Um, we have a dating that we can give to the Exodus, uh, the 12th century BC, yeah. right? We can look at all the possible um, pharaohs of that time, yeah. including that the Bible, by the way, actually mentions the storehouses of Ramses in the Exodus story. Does it name him by name? Well, they don't mention the pharaoh's name, but they mention the storehouse as the storehouse of Ramses. Yep. So using biblical data and historic data, 
we can try to marry the time of the Exodus to the reign of Ramses II. But you're mirroring that with the Bible, though. So you're using well, the Bible you you have Bible. nowhere else to get that information from. The information for for like for like the uh, the creation story, Exodus, the the Ark. Um, uh, the exodus of the Israelites in in uh, in like, like the Middle East or whatever. The primary source of that stuff is going to be from biblical text and then anything else that we can get from, from history. The Quran isn't here to offer a expansive story of these events. It's meant to assume, from my understanding, that people already know what these things are and just brings their attention to components of it. So yes, I'm using the Bible because the Bible will serve as the primary description but of the story. To use the Bible to measure it with uh, everything else, you would have to be historically accurate. If I, if I show you, There's show many you, ways that it is, yes. If I show you places where it's historically inaccurate, then it can't be used as a criteria. Okay, so what I'll say here is, yeah. I will use a Quranic example if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. The Quran says that some of it is clear and some of it is unclear. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, I can have, and you believe the Quran comes from God in a direct fashion. Yeah, yeah. So, I can openly appeal to the fact, just, just being very simple here, yeah, yeah. I can appeal to the fact that since the Bible is written by men yeah. and, uh, and uh, inspired yeah. by God, some components of it can be accurate and some cannot be. Exactly. But that doesn't change the fact yeah. that the primary yeah. evidence for these things yeah. exists within the Bible. For example, if I'm an atheist yeah. and I come to you as a Muslim and I want you to give me a date range for Moses, what will you tell me? Date? Well, the Quran would do that, so I couldn't. Okay, yeah. then I'm going to say he's an imaginary figure. An imaginary figure. Yeah, like, like yeah. How, how do I know he's not from like 100 BC, for example? You have to, op you have to appeal to biblical data. Yeah, to get but, that information. But it goes back to that thing. I remember you said like some of it, it might be true, some of it might not be because of there, there might be inaccuracies, absolutely. So how do we know but we still is? but we still use it. Yeah. Uh, so okay, let, let, let's just say what how do we know what is? What closely comports with reality? What can we evidence? So it's like estimate, you're estimating. Absolutely. Because I cannot tell you that I am a hundred percent certain that every detail in the Bible is exactly accurate. I, I, I can't say that to you. Yeah, exactly. So like, if, if, if the whole thing is in the accurate, you can't like base the facts. Nothing is a hundred percent accurate yeah. because that would imply perfection. So yeah. I can say God is hundred percent accurate, but human beings are not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But to like to say that Ramses is Ramses II has to be the actual Pharaoh. He's he, it's either him yeah. or another potential idea is the guy called um, Akinhotep. Yeah, so, so we're not sure like who he was, as we said. We're not sure because from what we've gathered so far from Egyptian data, it's one of the two. But the problem is that we arrive at the conclusion, not because of the Quran, because of the Bible and the details that we have from there. Well, I don't claim that the whole Bible is false. I, mean, I believe that's true. I understand your, your position, but I'm just saying that that's how we will hold things. But definitely read that Bible, man. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the coolest book ever, man. I, I guarantee you. I mean, that's about Midian, I've never heard of it till now. There's so many things you haven't heard of. Yeah. And I think if you just take some time, yeah. like I'm not saying like I speak with the entire thing today. Yeah. Take 10 years if you want. So it's massive, but, isn't it? It's massive, right? Yeah. But read the narratives, they're so good. And, and, and the thing I love about it the most, right? When you, no stone is left unturned. Yeah. Something that can be set up in Genesis can have a payoff later in like Isaiah. And you're like, oh snap! I remember that thing, and, and he got paid off. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, if you get time, my friend, have a look at it. I mean, the Bible is massive, but... Yeah. I didn't say do it today. Yeah, yeah. I said take 10 years if you want. Yeah. Read it slowly, please. Yeah. Understand what you're reading. I need to go to the craft first. I haven't even memorized half of it yet. Yeah. Whenever you get a time. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah. We're, we're interested in talking to you, innit? What's your name, by the way? David. Good luck. No, I'll bless you, Gulam, okay? Might see you more often. I can't, I can't. No worries, Gulam, okay? No worries. Uh, I hope I'll bring in you stuff that will that, blow your mind. Okay. All right? Hopefully I can bring you stuff as well. Go for it. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm down. All right. Yeah? Nice. God bless you. All right. All right. That was the conversation. Just very generalist. We're talking about the incarnation and if that represents any change in God. Uh, summary to that, it doesn't represent a change in God in the same way that when God creates our reality, He doesn't change. All that changes is our reality. It wasn't there, now it is there. There's like two terms that I think I've heard the Catholics use 
So for example, you have ad intra and ad extra processions. The ad intra would be inside of God. So that's why, that's why you would have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And there's only uh, uh, two processions in God and three persons. Now, when you have everything in the created order, in the world of form and matter, that would be something that, that's an, an ad extra outside of God procession. So when we have the universe, God isn't changing in his essence. And when you have the incarnation, the same thing applies. God isn't changing in his essence. The only thing that's changing is our reality. At one point there wasn't a Jesus, and at a different point there is a Jesus. So the only change that occurs is in our universe and not in God himself. And I gave the brother uh, Agula an understanding of this based upon what we know of the dwelling uh, of the presence of God in the temple and in the ark. There's a precedence for it. It's happened before. And a similar concept is happening in the person of Jesus. And so that's one way that you can explain how when you had the dwelling, there wasn't a change in God, and that's accepted by both the Jews and the Christians. And so in a similar fashion, when you have the incarnation, although different, there isn't a change happening in the essence of God. There you go. But anyway, he was a nice guy, so hopefully we can talk more about that. And lastly, I talked to him about the, uh, the conception within Islam of um, them descending from Ishmael and how Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Well, there's two problems here. The first problem is that the Arabs as a people are not extremely old. They aren't as old, for example, as like the Jewish people, if, if you will. They don't have a history going back 5,000, 10,000 years. But then, ironically, in their own sources, in particularly in Bukhari 33, 64, they imply, or they say very clearly, that Ishmael and his mother, Hagar, were joined by a group of people when she made a well. And these people uh, lived with them and taught Ishmael Arabic. And later he joined them and married into them, implying that the Arabic people already existed, according to their own sources, before Ishmael. In that way, he couldn't be a father of the Arabs, and instead, he merely joined them. So in that sense, Ishmael is more so of a half Chaldean and a half Egyptian than the father of the Arabs. But hey, he seemed open to it, he, he took it on board, and then we'll talk more in the future, and let's see if we can get him any more information.